Hello, I am Ahmad and in this video we are going to talk about longitudinal reinforcement design for ordinary concrete beam. This is not about pre-stress concrete structures, ordinary structures uh, related to beams and how to determine the reinforcement. First of all, we are going to discuss about Eurocode and how to define an element to be a beam. Then we will go through the basic equations and understand how to solve and analyze one beam for the maximum bending moment and this is the part one then for designing the reinforcement we will go to the other video so to design one element what do we need suppose we have one element under transverse load like distributed load it can be point load and assume that there is no significant actual load for this so to the first sight we can see that this element is under bending and it should be defined as a beam but when it comes to concrete elements and concrete structures the definition of a beam is a little bit different especially when it comes to materials like concrete uh, we need to know that if the shear deformation would happen in the element or not for that reason perhaps an element would be a deep beam instead of being a simple beam so every code has uh, its own definition about one element to be a beam after that when we notice that the element is a beam then we need to understand what are the uh, assumptions Based on the assumption, we need to check if uh, elastic or plastic analyzers can be applied uh, and what condition we can apply plastic analyzers. Then we need to write the equations, basic equations for the calculation. So for this, first of all, we go through the Euro code and in chapter five, we can see the definition of a beam. Idealization of the structure 531 structural models for overall analysis. Number three, a beam is a member for which the span is not less than three times of the overall section depth. Otherwise, it should be considered as a deep beam. So, to understand this clause, we can sketch one element. This is the length of the element, and this is the overall height. So a beam is a member for which the span is not less than or is greater than three times overall depth. Or we can say that if H is less than L over three, then we can categorize the element as a beam. After that, we can check from chapter six of Eurocode. If an element is considered as a beam, then we need to know what kind of condition we can apply. So here we are talking about ULS for SLS. There will be another uh, video later, uh, not very soon, perhaps in a few months, I will record another video related to uh, SLS. Bending with or without actual force. At the moment, we are talking about only beams. When the time mining, the ultimate moment resistance of reinforced or pre-stressed concrete cross sections, the following assumptions are made. Plane sections remain plane. It means that if it's a beam, uh, then the shear distortion will not happen. And we are dealing with the euler bernoulli beam, not Timoshenko beam. The strain in bonded reinforcement or bonded pre-stressing tendons, whether in tension or in compression, is the same as that in the surrounding concrete. The tensile strength of the concrete is ignored. The stresses in the concrete in compression are derived from the design stress strain relation given in 317. So let's understand what does, for example, the first one mean. So the plane remains plane. It means that if we have this type of cross section and it's under bending moment, then when it is deformed, the plane is completely a plane. So the strain in bonded reinforcement is the same for concrete and steel. So it means that we know that uh, we have to 
consider the minimum anchorage length if we have enough anchorage length for uh, reinforcement used in the concrete then it means that we have enough bond if we have enough bond then it means that they are completely bonded or we can assume that as a result if we have reinforced inside the concrete element and it's deformed due to bending moment here in this elevation we can see that or we can assume that the elongation of the reinforcement is the same as elongation of the concrete in the same level the tensile strength of concrete is ignored um, concrete in tension is very weak and uh, the, the resistance is almost 10 percent of the compression we can assume that there is no uh, tensile strength in concrete and also stress strain is uh, taken from the relationship given in 317 in uh, 317 stress strain relations for the design of cross sections item 3 a rectangular stress distribution may be assumed the factor lambda defining the effective height of the compression zone and the factor eta defining the effective strain follow from the given equations as far as most likely we are dealing with the concrete class less than 50 60 so fck is usually less than 50 megapascal unless it's in the exceptional uh, case as a result lambda can be assumed to be 0 0.8 and also eta for the relevant concrete is usually taken as one so in the given figure number three five uh, we can see the relation between stress and strain so in the stress strain relationship as shown in the middle of this graph you can see that it is always linear and the reason is that we assume the plane remains plane one thing and also the reinforcement and concrete has the same strain in the level of connection as far as they are assumed to be bonded perfectly in the right we can see the stress distribution and the stress distribution follows the uh, Whitney uh, block as shown here and the height of this block is less than the height of compressive concrete so here the actual compressive height is x as we can see in the cross section so this is the compressive zone which the neutral axis is placed the neutral axis refers to the level that the strain is neutral or zero so it's completely unchanged after bending moment is applied to simplify how to calculate or determine the concrete force we can assume that it's following Whitney block with the height of lambda x and lambda as we stated is 0.8 eta for this range of concrete is 1 and that's the stress strain relationship next coming to clause 5 6 plastic analyzes chapter 6 is about how to analyze the concrete elements and concrete structures methods based on plastic analyzers shall only be used for the check at ULS so this is only possible to be used for the ULS not SLS so in other words we can use plastic analyzers for our calculation this is a kind of upper bond theory and if you read more in clause 561 you will see that it is also mentioned somewhere so in other words we can calculate the ultimate resistance of a concrete beam based on plastic theory there is another video about how to calculate the plastic bending moment uh, in the mechanic uh, playlist coming back to the figure 3 5 we can see that the s train in concrete can reach to epsilon cu3 and if we go through the 317 item number two we can see that uh, the, the item number one is about the uh, accurate behavior of uh, concrete number two 
is other simplified stress strain relationships may be used if equivalent to or more conservative than the one defined in one for instance bilinear according to figure 3 4 compressive stress and shortening strain shown as absolute values with values of epsilon c3 and epsilon cu3 according to table 3 so epsilon c3 represents the yielding point in a way and epsilon cu3 represents the ultimate limit of that so if we come back to the figure 3 5 we can assume that in the plastic analyzers epsilon at furthest edge of concrete can reach to epsilon cu3 so here we can see that uh, for the calculation of uh, stress in concrete we can use fcd representing the design value of compressive capacity of concrete it is given to plus 316 of uh, euro code the value of the design compressive strength is defined as fcd is alpha cc times fck divided by gamma c fck is the characteristic value of concrete in compression fck um, is the concrete compressive strength in characteristic phase which is coming from concrete class gamma c is the partial safety factor and alpha cc is the coefficient taking account of long-term effects so in the note it is written that it should be between 0 0.8 and 1 it depends on the country and the national annex representing that value so in finland for example finnish national annex demonstrates that this value should be taken as 0 0.85 you can follow the national annex of the country that you are designing the project so gamma c is the partial factor and it is given in 2424 four. partial factors for materials for ultimate limit state gamma c and gamma s should be used in the table we can see for persistent and transient condition or design situation concrete partial factor gamma c is taken as 1.5 and for reinforcement gamma s is taken as 1.15 so up to here we have all the things that we want for the concrete but in terms of uh, steel we need to find out how to calculate epsilon s as we can see here in a steel the s strain is following the concrete strain and when we are talking about the uh, plastic design so we are referring to the moment that both material are in the situation that they are in their ultimate limit so in this case uh, if we have a lot of steel then the steel is much uh, stronger than concrete what would happen then uh, when we are increasing the the bending moment inside the concrete element gradually epsilon cu3 is formed and steel as far as we have a lot of uh, reinforcement they are not yielding anymore because we have a lot of steel so in that case the failure would be because of failure of concrete in compression this failure if a steel is in the linear phase and concrete is uh, completely failed because of uh, going beyond this epsilon cu3 so this failure is called brittle failure and there is no notice in advance but if we have moderate steel, then it's the moment that the steel starts to yield before concrete fails. So this kind of failure is called uh, ductile failure, meaning that a steel yields before concrete crash. So the good design for concrete beam is in a way that a steel yields before concrete approaches to its maximum strain which is the ultimate strain as a result uh, increasing uh, the steel inside a concrete element might not be a very good idea because after you increase the steel in the element you will see that there is no further capacity for bending moment we will go through this later on in the other video so in this example we are going to calculate with 
what percentage or with what area of steel we are in a situation that simultaneously steel starts to yield concrete fails so if we can find out the relation between steel and concrete in yielding point of steel and simultaneously ultimate strain limit of concrete we can have a limit for the steel and this situation is called balance situation for that we need to have also the steel properties it is given in chapter 32 of Eurocode with the given graph design assumption we can see that f by d is f by k we have two types of b and c class class b and class c for reinforcement and usually uh, f by k is 500 megapascal gamma s as sketched here written here uh, is taken from the same table and for the reinforcement is 1.5 so fyd is fyk divided by gamma s which is 500 megapascal divided by 1.15 and it is 435 megapascal and this is epsilon yd the yielding design strain of steel which is fyd divided by e of steel um, e can be taken between 195 to 210 gigapascal in this uh, chapter 2 yes here it is written that uh, es can be assumed to be 200 gigapascal so it will be 435 megapascal divided by 200 gigapascal so this is the epsilon yd now coming back to the stress strain deformation in this video we are going to calculate what is the relation between forces in steel and concrete and also what is the relation between the bending moment so for now we assume that the steel in compression is not effective and we only consider the effect of tension steel and also concrete in compression calculation of balance reinforcement first of all let's sketch the rectangular concrete beam i neglect the effect of compressive reinforcement as and d is the distance from the furthest compressive side of concrete to the center line of reinforcement effective depth with the width of b of our concrete beam now if we look at the side of this element we know that uh, the plane remains plane as a result after applying the bending moment we assume the bending moment is positive then the plane remains a plane this is the strain line in the level of reinforcement this is a strain of steel and on the top this is epsilon of concrete as we know the distance between the concrete in compression and the neutral axis is taken as x and if we sketch the stress distribution and if we apply the uh, Whitney block instead of real distribution of concrete in compression it will be a rectangle block in compression which the height is lambda times x in steel also we have the steel stress in the design phase and here theta times fcd let's go with very ordinary case eta is taken as one if c or fck is less than 50 megapascal and lambda is 0 0.8 better if we sketch in 3d this is the stress in concrete and here in the steel we have fsd the height of the concrete in compression here is lambda times x so the cross section needs to be in equilibrium as a result the force due to compression in concrete should be as same as the force as tension in steel so concrete force will be the stress times the area 
the width of the element is b so the stress here is fcd times b times lambda x and the tension is in the steel is fsd times area of the steel now to have equilibrium concrete in compression force needs to be the same as a steel in tension so one equation from here is that fcd times b times lambda x should be as same as fsd times as the other equation can be achieved by considering the deformation this distance is epsilon s and the top is epsilon c and the distance is x we know that the distance from the furthest compressive edge of concrete to the center of the reinforcement is effective depth now we can write triangle principle epsilon c divided by x is the same as epsilon s divided by d minus x or from here i can say that x divided by d minus x is the same as epsilon c divided by epsilon s this is the second equation that we have now we know that epsilon c is limited to epsilon cu which if you look at uh, table 3 1 from euro code this is 0 0.0035 so now in a certain cross section usually the dimensions are uh, given or noun in this case in this equation number 2 d is noun epsilon c the ultimate limit is 0 0.0035 and epsilon s would define the height of compressive concrete is stated as x in this equation so let's simplify equation number two x divided by d minus x plus x equals to epsilon c divided by epsilon s plus epsilon c as a result x will be epsilon c divided by epsilon s plus epsilon c times d so here we can see that uh, d and epsilon c are constant value and the height of the compressive concrete is a function of epsilon s so meaning that with changing epsilon s x is also changed now we are looking for the moment that simultaneously when a steel yields concrete is also in its ultimate limit so the balance situation is defined balance condition means that when the steel yields concrete approaches to its ultimate strain so in other words a steel will be in yield point as a result fsd will be fyd epsilon sd will be epsilon yd and for concrete epsilon in concrete will be epsilon cu so now we can write down x in balance is 0 0.0035 divided by epsilon yd plus 0 0.0035 times d as far as usually we have fyk 500 megapascal and fyd 435 megapascal we calculated f uh, epsilon yd 0 0.002175 so from here x balance will be 0. 617d so this is the balance height of the cross section now we are looking for the corresponding steel area to fulfill this condition coming back to equation number one lambda is 0 0.8 and in the balance situation we name as 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 balance and we can write down this as x balance which is 0 0.617d so from here i can calculate asb is fcd divided by f here also we can say that as far as steel yields so this is also f by d times b times 0 0.8 times 0 0.617 times d and from here i can write down asb is 0 0.8 times 0 0.617 times fcd divided by fyd b and d so this value multiplication of these two results in 0 0.493 as a result 
I can write down AS balance times FYD divided by FCD divided by BD is 0.493. So this uh, equation or this uh, parameters can be written as omega. So if omega is in balance situation, then this is called beta BD. So here beta BD is called is taken as 0 0.493. In other words, if omega equals to AS divided by BD times F by D divided by FCD is less than beta BD, it means that we are dealing with a less steel inside the element. So low steel as a result, the failure would be due to the failure will be due to a steel yielding. This is called ductile failure. On the other hand, if omega, which is AS divided by BD times FYD divided by FCD is greater than beta BD, then this is over a steel or high steel ratio. In this case, failure will be due to concrete crash, which is called brittle failure. Now let's uh, summarize and have, have some kind of uh, formulation of the calculation. So omega is AS divided by BD times FYD divided by FCD. This is a coefficient that we can define if our cross section is overly um, reinforced or moderate reinforced. And what would be the failure mode? Beta BD is uh, ASB divided by BD, FYD divided by FCD. So this value is 0 0.493. And if the steel is with a characteristic yielding point of 500 megapascal. So after calculation of these, this is CC, which is FCD times B times lambda X. And here we have T, which is FSD times AS. And the distance between these two is the levier arm for the bending calculation. So here this is D. This height is lambda X. This is lambda X divided by 2. As a result, the levier arm will be d minus lambda x divided by 2. I can calculate the bending moment. It can be cc or t because these are the same times the levier arm d minus lambda x divided by 2. So I will continue with cc, which is fcd times b times lambda x, d minus lambda x divided by 2. Now I can factor fcd times b times lambda x from d 1 minus lambda x divided by 2 d so now uh, in any case we need to have this cc equals to t to be valid as a result fcd e lambda x should be always the same as fsd times as and from here i can calculate lambda x which is FSD divided by FCD times AS divided by B. And now I add one D here to have a dimensionless factor, and we can name this beta. So in other words, lambda X is beta D. So if I substitute this value to this equation, then bending moment will be FCD times B times beta d times d times 1 minus 1 over 2 beta. So m will be fcd times beta uh, times b times d square beta 1 minus 1 over 2 beta. So this parameter here is also simplified to be mu. Now we know how to calculate the bending moment in a cross section fcd times b d square times mu of which mu is beta times 1 minus 1 over 2 beta and also beta is fsd divided by fcd times as divided by bd the only thing is that if you are looking for a ductile failure instead of 
any brittle failure, then we need to limit the reinforcement. If it is less than AS balance, then uh, we ensure that steel yields. And if steel yields, the only thing that we need to modify here is FYD. Let's complete this uh, video with some notes. Beta BD is 0 0.493 if FYK is 500 megapascal. And we have this beta factor which is AS divided by BD times FYD divided by FCD if the steel is less than balanced steel. Also, mu is beta times 1 minus beta divided by 2 and then we can calculate moment as mu times FCD BD square. If area of the steel is greater than a steel balance or beta is greater than beta bd then we consider that we just neglect the excessive reinforcement to ensure that the failure will be completely in the ductile failure instead of being brittle as a result we go on with beta bd it doesn't mean that we cut reinforcement or re we remove reinforcement. We assume that the reinforcement is not greater than ASB. So here we can modify that beta is the minimum value of beta and beta BD. This beta is AS divided by BD times FYD divided by FCD. And then we can continue to calculate the bending capacity of a concrete beam. That's the end of this video we went through the concept and also formalization of the concrete beams under bending moment how to calculate the balance reinforcement what the balance reinforcement is and how to simplify the calculation of bending moment in a concrete beam in the next video we will go through the calculation of uh, bending resistance of a concrete beam and then we will continue with calculation of the required reinforcement which is always the question of designing of a reinforcement concrete beam thank you for watching see you next time bye